Hi everyone, всем привет, лабди и добро пожаловать. Welcome to my channel, Alice Yummy Food. Today I'm gonna show you the most amazing Russian sour cream cake, but we're going to be doing a chocolate version. Now my original vanilla version was really, really popular, so I decided to experiment and come up with this new idea. And I really liked it! <laughs> if you are a chocolate fan, you will love this cake. The base is very soft and, and like doughy, and then you have that custardy, creamy filling inside. It's really, really, really delicious. If you want to get access to this recipe, including 500 other amazing recipes, you can join my online cooking school at alizyummyfood.com slash recipes. And join thousands of other students just like you. And we have our amazing cooking and baking community you have my support, you have no ads in my membership and it's just super easy to search for any recipe so you don't have to break your head anymore. You also save time and money because all the recipes are 100% tested so you'll never fail and waste any of that. I really hope you join our online cooking school and you can find more details down below in my description box or you can check it out on my website. Now let's get cooking! First thing we're going to do is make our dough into lukewarm water, add sugar and fresh yeast. You can also use dry yeast, it's up to you. And then mix everything together. We're going to leave the mixture to bloom and, you know, puff up for at least five minutes or so for our yeast to activate. Then add your egg and oil and mix everything together with vanilla extract and set this aside for a little bit, at least 15 minutes or so while we prepare our dry ingredients. Over here I've got my plain flour, we're gonna add some salt, cocoa powder and just mix everything together until there are no lumps and the mixture becomes nice and chocolatey. You can also do all of this in your stand mixer or you can roll your dough by hand as well, it's up to you. Then you want to add sugar and mix everything one more time until there are no lumps. What I usually do, I take a whisk and just mix everything a few more times until the mixture is nice smooth powder, just like so. After you've done that, you're going to take your wet ingredients and you're going to pour a little bit inside and mix everything together with a spoon first, otherwise the whisk is just going to get stuck on the mixture. So just mix everything, then add more mixture, mix again and keep going until the dough starts to form into a thick dough. You want to keep going until it starts to sort of feel more sturdy. And again, you can do this in your stand mixer with a dough hook attachment. Once your dough starts to become more pileable, you want to add a little bit of oil onto your hands so it's easier for you to roll it out and the dough will be very sticky and it might be hard to mix it. What you want to do next, you want to add a little bit of flour onto your surface and then add your dough. It will be super sticky and wet. That's normal. You're going to add more dough on top and you're just going to knead the dough for five minutes or so just so we can make sure all the ingredients are mixed through and your gluten is mixed as well and stretched. If you're going to do this in a stand mixer, you might need to knead this for about five minutes or so by hand. It could actually take a bit longer, maybe 10 minutes. You should get nice smooth dough just like this by the end of it. And if it starts to stick to your counter, don't worry about it. Don't be tempted to add more flour. You can always add a little bit of oil and the dough will still be very sticky and that's normal. We're going to leave the dough in a bowl. Make sure you add some oil inside, mix it through and then add your dough. We're going to proof the dough for about an hour, an hour and a half in a warm place. Make sure you have a nice kitchen spot in your house where you can leave the dough. I wrap it in cling film and then you can also do that or just put a towel, damp towel over the dough. After your dough has proofed, you will see it will double in size and it will be a slow rise, but all of the ingredients will just work well together. Look how soft and fluffy the dough is after it's rested. Bear in mind, it will still be sticky, so we need to be careful when working with this dough. You wanna add a little bit of flour onto your surface and just roll out your dough. Make sure you've got everything floured, your rolling pin, your working station, 
and just gently roll it out okay you want to push onto the dough and just stretch it into different directions now this amount is given to my large mold um, if you have a smaller mold you might need to use less of the dough and you can use the dough for any other pies or you can use a large tin this is 24 centimeters so i have already lined it with baking sheet and what i'm doing now is measuring making sure that it's enough to fit inside it's very important that you use a cooking spray or oil inside your tin so that the dough doesn't get stuck and you see how still fragile this dough is even though we rolled it out you then want to tuck it into your mold and go around the sides and basically just push around the corners in the middle making sure it sticks to your pan or whatever mold you'll be using you could use any shape to be honest it doesn't really matter as long as you can fit the filling inside as we have a lot of uh, sour cream filling that's going inside so that's why i recommend using a tall big mold this is a cheesecake pan mold and once it's done you're going to set this aside and we're gonna make our delicious filling. So add your eggs into a bowl together with sugar and vanilla extract. And we're going to whisk this on high speed for five to eight minutes until your eggs turn completely white and pale. What I mean is that after whisking for a long time, the color will change and they'll become more fluffy and more pale. And this is what's going to give it a nice fluffy texture and a rise in our cake. You should be able to write number eight with your mixture. That's how you will know that it's done. After that, you're going to add one tablespoon of your sour cream a little bit at a time while mixing on high speed. And you're going to repeat the process until all of your sour cream is gone. Lastly, feel free to add more vanilla extract if you want to. And once it's all done, the mixture will become more liquid because the sour cream breaks it down, but it will still be very, very fluffy. You then want to use this mixture straight away and pour it into your prepared tin. So this, don't make this mixture ahead of time. It needs to be made just before baking. And pour everything inside. And then I like to add shaved or chopped chocolate all over. Make sure you cover the pie just like that and that chocolate will melt into your cake which is amazing now we're going to bake this for about 40 to 45 minutes depending on your oven so always make sure and check uh, when we take it out it should be a little bit wobbly in the middle and smell incredible once it cools down you want to take it out of your mold and you want to leave your cake to fully cool down and set in the fridge for at least few hours then once it's done you're going to decorate it with icing sugar and just enjoy it i will show you how it looks inside it's absolutely fabulous you've got nice soft chocolate kind of like a cakey biscuit base together with a creamy vanilla sour cream filling and more dark chocolate on top this cake is absolutely fantastic. I love it so much and it just melts in your mouth. It's so delicious. I hope you enjoy it.